Hi there, Travel by Water here. Today we're going to talk a little bit about my handheld Marine VHF. Uh, this unit is a standard Horizon HX280S. So we're going to take a quick look at some of the features, we're going to talk about my usage and the kind of performance I've gotten out of this radio. Uh, you can do lots of things with a VHF Marine radio. You can stay in touch with other boaters, with friends. You can uh, stay in touch with a shore party if you have two, two radios, right? One on the boat, somebody going ashore. Uh, you can talk to somebody, uh, you know, uh, at, at the beach. But uh, there's really, there's two reasons, two primary reasons that uh, small boat sailors venturing more than, you know, a mile or two from, uh, from their home base uh, should definitely have a, a marine VHF and uh, those reasons are uh, rescue. Uh, you can use this radio to call the Coast Guard. You can use this radio to call other boaters to come and assist you. Uh, so that's the big one big reason is rescue and then the other big reason is weather. Uh, you can get a weather report uh, in most coastal areas with a handheld marine VHF. So that's that's why I have mine. I, I have it available for uh, for rescue and um, I also check the weather with it regularly, especially you know if, I, if I'm away from the internet and there's no internet access to check the, the weather, this is my go-to. Uh, and as weather systems develop, say I'm out on the water, I see some clouds I don't like, I can turn on the radio and get, get a weather report. And, uh, and make a decision on the most up-to-date weather report. Okay, so just quickly, why, uh, why a handheld marine VHF? Well, I'm uh, primarily a small boat sailor these days, and uh, so my, my boat has no uh, electrical system whatsoever, no 12-volt electrical system, and uh, it's really important for a boat to, uh, a cruising style of boat to carry a uh, VHF marine radio, so I go with a handheld. Uh, okay, uh, Okay, and some uh, quick notes on performance uh, with this uh, with this radio. Um, I, I've had uh, I find the transmission range I find to be maybe in the neighborhood of three miles. Generally, I don't find uh, I generally get much better uh, than that. But I found uh, some of the competition, especially the cheaper radios, don't even get that. Um, the Coast Guard will hear you further away, but to have a conversation with another boater or a, a shore station, I find about three miles to work on uh, on uh, the five watt setting, and then on the one watt setting. That's for just communicating uh, inside a marina or anchorage. Okay. Okay. So how do I carry my uh, marine VHF? I carry it on my life jacket, so it's with me all the time. It's not down below in the boat. It, it's on my person, so that way, even if I fall overboard, I've got my radio with me to uh, to call for help, or, or um, you know, if if I don't, I don't have to leave the cockpit, go down below, get the radio. It's with me all the time on my person. I don't find the weight to be cumbersome. Uh, my life jacket has a pocket for it, and I wear my life jacket pretty well all the time when I'm sailing. Uh, and the radio just tucks in there. Okay, and it's also got a belt thing, but I wouldn't trust the belt thing personally. I like having it in the radio, or in the life jacket. And one quick note is the radio is not my only way to call for help. Uh, I also have a satellite-based system that will work anywhere in the world. I've got a 406 uh, megahertz. Uh, PLB that I wear on my life jacket as well. So I have two means of calling for help. Marine VHF, personal locator beacon. And one more performance consideration. Uh, this is a submersible uh, radio and I find it is it is submersible. It's it's incredibly uh, incredibly waterproof. Um, you know, I, I, I've, I've gone in the water wearing it uh, right into the water in addition to spray and rain and that sort of thing and the radio continues to perform. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to have problems with uh, water. The only issue sometimes is if you're taking a lot of spray all day, you'll get a little bit of water in the speaker and uh, so it messes up the sound a little bit until it dries out. Then the other uh, performance uh, consideration with the uh, VHF is battery life and I find the uh, battery life to be excellent on this radio. Uh, the literature says 13 hours um, but I find the functional um, battery life to be several weeks for me because I don't keep my radio on all the time. If I see weather developing I'll turn it on, get a weather report, uh, 
in the morning before I leave, I'll get a weather report. I have it with me in case I need to call for help. Or if I want to call ahead to a marina, that I'm coming into a marina or a moorage, I turn it on, I make my call, I turn it off. Uh, bigger boats, you keep your marine VHF on all the time uh, because then you know you, you, you monitor it. But for a small boat that doesn't have a, an electrical system like this boat, it's not practical. So I uh, yeah I've I've been cruising for a couple of weeks with this radio and the battery life has been really really impressive. Uh, I just spent uh, five days in Florida with it uh, without charging it, um, it, doing weather rope daily uh, weather checks and that sort of thing. No problems. It still had like three out of three bars uh, at the end of the trip. Okay, and I've got my uh, tablet here. I'm just going to read through some uh, performance uh, features. It's submersible. Uh, it says 13 hours battery life, 5 watt and 1 watt transmission output, uh, supplied with uh, 1600 milliamp lithium ion battery. Okay, uh, it's got a key lock, um, dual watch, priority scan, um, low battery indicator, and this one comes with a three-year warranty, a three-year warranty. So that's, that's pretty good for a marine electronic, I think, a three-year warranty. Uh, this radio came with both a uh, 110 wall charger, uh, AC, and it also came with a 12-volt cigarette style uh, charger. Uh, I haven't seen my 12-volt charger in several years. I've had this radio about five years and three boats, so I may not have the 12-volt anymore. But that's what the wall charger looks like. doesn't take too long to charge. Okay, so let's take a quick look at some of the uh, buttons and controls on this radio. Uh, on the right here, we've got uh, push to talk. Okay, so, so that will be transmit when you push the button. You got your volume and uh, uh, on off switch over here on this dial. Antenna, you change channels up and down using these buttons here. Uh, you've got a scan and dual watch feature here. You can program, I think it's 10, uh, 10 channels into your memory. So you access memory here and your preset here. You can uh, be on any channel. And uh, there's a 16 button here, so the radio will go straight to 16, which is the international calling in distress. You've got a squelch control. Um, you've got your high-low, so that's between 1 watt and 5 watt. Uh, that's something to be aware of. Some of the cheaper radios don't have a 5 watt setting. They've got like a 2.5 or 3 or something. And with these little radios, I find you really do need that uh, extra wattage, that extra power to get a transmission out. So do look for a radio with uh, 5 watt transmission power, in my opinion. Uh, and then you've got your weather button. So this will be something you use all the time. So you hit WX and then you scan until you find um, a uh, weather transmission. Okay, it's looking like we're not going to get one here. Okay, actually we are getting a weather. Um, so I have... Uh, I have been in places where I wasn't able to get a weather report, even on the shore, uh, but uh, usually it's pretty good. You can usually get something. Uh, one more quick note on uh, VHF radios. If you are new to boating and, or you've never owned a VHF radio before, before you go out and purchase one of these, you're supposed to have a license, uh, an operator's license. Here in Canada, it's the law. Um, the Power and Sail Squadron uh, offers a course to get a license. Um, I did mine through a college. Uh, in the United States, I'm not exactly sure what the uh, requirements are, but they're similar to Canada. There are licensing requirements, and I'm guessing that those uh, the Power Squadron would offer it there as well as uh, the ASA, the American Sailing Association. Uh, in terms of cost, the, my cost is it's a, maybe a little bit irrelevant because I've had this radio for about five years. I think I paid $95 for it. It, it was less than $100. So uh, uh, they're probably over $100 now, um, but they're in that, uh, in that ballpark. Okay, so that's, uh, that's all I have for you today. That's a quick look at the Standard Horizon Submersible HX280S Handheld Marine VHF. They're a great addition to uh, equipment addition to uh, any boat, especially any boat where you're going to be doing some cruising or uh, weekending on because you can get those weather reports, you can call for help. Uh, when there's no cell phone signal, you can call other boaters as well as the Coast Guard. 
I, I think it's a, a great thing to have, uh, whether you buy this model or a different model. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you for watching the Travel by Water channel.